there we go. Can we have it um, transmit in Facebook, please? <clears throat> We'll be will will be transmitting directly on live Facebook Live. Ma'am, we are going to live now. That is what, what I'm checking. Hello, everyone. Hello, Just Viviani. Hello. It's nice seeing all of you again. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation. I guess we are going to start. Well, welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am uh, Dr. Rita Aguilar from Mexico. I am the project director of Innovating Teachers. Greetings fellow, fellow educators and welcome to a journey of inspiration and collaboration. Today marks the exciting launch of our innovating teachers from the whole world, a, web, a series of webinars. This is a platform designed to connect educators across borders and empower them to transform their classrooms. As teachers, we know the profound impact we have on young minds, uh, small minds, adult minds. We shape their perspectives ignitate their curiosity and equip them with skills to navigate an ever-changing world. But in today's interconnected landscape, the challenges and opportunities we face transcend individual classrooms. That's why Innovating Teachers from the Whole World was born. This series is a gateway to a global network of passionate educators through engaging webinars, We'll share innovating teacher teaching practices, explore diverse educational perspectives, and foster cross-culture understanding. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or embarking on your teacher journey, this platform is designed to inspire, to challenge, and equip with you with valuable tools and knowledge. So join us on this exciting journey. In this first webinar, we'll be exploring different innovations from our team. Get ready to be inspired, learn from your peers, and discover new ways to make your classroom a global hub of innovation. Let's connect, share, and together shape the future of education. Thanking Mudin, thanking GEN, thank you, thanking Karina for letting us be part of this innovating team for letting us share these innovations from all around the world. So we will, we will first introduce our moderator for today, Ruben Garcia, who is an educator in, in ESL and ELP. of Applied Linguistic and TESOL, NSW Australia. He also works as a coach in leadership, personal development, and professional growth. 
CEO and founder of Assertive, Assertive Leadership College, which is a consulting company for professional and personal growth. He is from Peru, Peru branch president of the International Chamber of Language Teachers, IC, ICLT, Peru branch president of ad organization, Organización Internacional de Conferencistas, OIC, the International Organization of Public Speakers, Master Trainer Certificate by Cámara Internacional of, uh, of Coaching, International Coaching, USA, Master Coach at Organización Mundial de Coaches, OMC, World, Worldwide Organization of Coaches, Country, Direc Country Director of the International Internship University, IIAU, City Coordinator at International English Language Teachers Association, ELTA, Deputy National Director of International Society of Teachers, Administrators, and Researchers, I-STAR, Country Director of Ad African Global Development for Positive Change Initiative, ADI Africa, Country Director of Ignacine Dreams of Young Minds, ID Foundation, Honorary International Advisor Board Member of Positive Thoughts Consulting and Training Solution, Krishna Educare, Shetu, Honorary Country Head. Thank you very much, Ruben Garcia, for being our moderator today. And well, let's begin and let's listen to this innovating team. Thank you and welcome everyone. Hello, welcome to this great moment in the teaching. We are here with one purpose. We all learn and we share what we know. And this is the aim of this great event. GEMS Innovating Teachers. And we have four great innovating teachers for today who are going to give us a great message. And they are the ones you want to start talking about great topics today. Let's start with a great professional. He is from Ecuador. Let me tell you some important facts of this great speaker. He has been working as an EFL teacher for more than 10 years in different Ecuadorian high schools, language centers, and universities. Besides, he has participated in an international PISO course in the Kansas State University in 2013. Also, he has participated in an English teacher training TISO methodology course awarded by the American Embassy in 2019. Lately, he has focused on doing in action research since 2017. He has worked in Liceo Naval High School and he implemented the use of blogs to integrate reading and writing skills in the international baccalaureate with second diploma, diplomate students. In 2019, he presented some topics in some congress in Quito and Guayaquil. Also, he participated in Pura Congress in 2019. He's a very well-trained teacher and he's open to share his knowledge. I am talking about Andres Rodriguez Camayo. Please welcome him with great virtual applause because he's ready to talk today. Please, Andres, from Ecuador, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for your inspiring words, uh, Ruben, and that well, uh, um, warning welcome. Hello, everybody, dear Gene members, innovative teaching, Dr. Rita Aguilar, 
eh, Ruben, Fens, Gerardo, eh, eh, Martín, and the rest of the team. So, my dear colleagues, it's a pleasure and I'm so excited to see you again <clears throat> as a new adventure, as a new journey. So, as Ruben says at the beginning, so we are here with a purpose. The purpose is to share and transmit our knowledge, no? And learn from other people's experience. That's the that's the um, the <clears throat> that's the things that we can um, learn from education. Now remember that education is not only to transmit. It, there are many many different component components that we have to follow. Well, according to this um, uh, presentation, that is according to innovative things, innovating teachers. Yeah. So let me tell you that innovating is one of the teacher's new century characteristics. So innovating is not only something that you can do it when you are in your free time or when you are free of things, no? We discover things. We observe every moment, every time in a classroom, uh, outside the classroom, okay, in the in the online sessions too. We observe different things, you no, know? students' behavior, students' reaction, uh, students' learning, um, well, different things. So the curiosity is the is the the first thing that appears in the discovery of new things. Because of the discovery, the the, the sci scientist has proof different things. And in education, the discovery of the new things, the implementation, and also the uh, when we make conclusions about things, about uh, the research we made, those results make um, reality in the classroom. And the result is that our students feel happy and they feel comfortable with the innovations that we make. So. I, I want to start first um, uh, introducing about innovating things. So innovating, innovating things is apart from the qualities is more than um, interesting feelings that the teachers uh, most capable to have. So to incorporate in our characteristics. So in this moment, let me share with you um, some guidance from my from my staff, okay? Well, okay. This is some. This is one of the innovative things that um that um that I'm trying that I was trying to implement in one of the institution that I was concerning to work. So gamification is a is a topic that is discussed. Um, but it's discussed not because of the concept of games or things that we incorporate in our lesson plans. No, no, no. Gamification is a topic that has different sides. And, and I want to share with you how can we use in order to transform or how we can change teachers' mindset or students' perceptions, okay? First of all, gamification it's not only playing games as, as a myth, no? as we heard, no? Gamification is a tool, yeah, in the online sessions and also in the real classrooms, in the face-to-face -face classes, no? So many of you will ask, how can we use gamifications in the classroom? Well, so I'm going to share with you some of the conclusions that I have made in, in during the action research that I have made in the institutions. So when you made us break in activities, for example, when you ask the students to stand up or present something that the students uh, enhance with their prior knowledge on day, or you call their attention, or you surprise them with an activity and say, please uh, guys, write your name or say something about this. And they, have the curiosity to ask teacher. So, well, today we are going to do something new. We, or why are we doing this, no? So let me tell you that ice, that ice breaking activity 
is part of your innovation. Yeah. And innovation is not only about technology. Innovation is not only about the um, disruptive things that you can do in your classroom, no? Simple changes that you made as routine, as a part of your routine in your classroom, they can be considered innovative things too, because you are changing mindset, you're changing behaviors, changing attitude, attitudes of your students. So it reveals the fact that when teachers change uh, seating configuration in the classroom, or you make your students stand up and sing to each other, and you model activities and say, okay, guys, we are going to do this. Uh, we are going to imagine that we are going to play a game or you throw a ball and you ask something or you say something interesting to your students and they respond to you in a positive way. So you will notice that intrinsic motivation of your students reveals how they feel. Um, Stephen Krashen, said in his one of his theories, okay, that a student responds, okay, according to the activities that we implement in our classroom when those activities incorporate in, in motivation. So this is the affected filter, no? So the feelings when you reduce uh, the anxiety or negative feelings in the classroom, especially when we are teaching English or something that uh, students feel that they can struggle. So yeah. as teachers we are, we can change that mindset or we can present a different scenario. So ice breaking is possible to be, is, pos is, is possible to be applied as innovative things in your classroom if, if you haven't tried it before. So let's try it and I invite you to do it. I'm and I have tried to do it in this way. In order to uh, explain how evaluation works, okay, in, re in the real world, okay. So we use our classroom to observe different students' behaviors. So it's like an experimental group. And you will notice that students learn in different ways. So it is founded in this in the the theory of learning styles that individuals learn in different forms. Some of them are visual, some of them are kinesthetic, others are sensorial, so there are uh, auditorials, others are in they develop intrapersonal skills. So I can't imagine that you can only evaluate with formal tests. Mm, they don't define completely the knowledge or the or this language skill that the students know. There are different ways that you can evaluate the students, and this illustration is real. So we can't we cannot ignore our students' capabilities. So how can we prove that our students can develop the skills? And how can we evaluate them in order to prove? their uh, development. Well, if you want to see how capable is a monkey, you can't evaluate him in the river. So you need to allow them, allow people be free in their learning styles that they feel comfortable. Or uh, you can't evaluate uh, Another person that ha that have artistic, uh, artistic uh, skills, you evaluate only with numbers. So results can show you can re reveal that maybe this is not the standard or the correct uh, uh, formal evaluation of the way that you the instrument that you can use in the class. Observation is possible now. Uh, and a way that you can also innovate in your classroom, follow with a rubric in order to observe your students develop. So how can you observe? You can observe different parameters. For example, uh, participation in class, you can observe um, 
for example, the interaction, the social interaction that they have it when when you uh, give some roles in your students when they work in groups. Okay, so working in groups when you configure different roles, it's a good opportunity to observe your students. Okay, and the innov the innovative part in in that work is that when you assign roles, you empower your students the capabilities that they can. Uh, develop. For example, maybe one student is good for reading, another student is good for uh, leader, uh, for assuming a, a leadership role in the group. Other students are good for collaborating and doing something, for example, drawing or editing and writing. So the positive thing here is that the students are going to develop a specific roles and they integrate those uh, tasks. And as a result, you're gonna have, you're going to have that your students develop different skills and they learn from each other. And that result is applied in real life when they go to work in, uh, in different places when they are required to do tasks, when they are required to, to achieve goals, especially when they work in teams and they work in different groups when people with people that they don't know. So you can consider that is, that is something innovative that you can implement in your classroom, it, uh, keeping in mind that there are different tasks that you can um, uh, implement according to your students' interests, your students' characteristics, uh, and the things that you consider that your students need to develop according to their the lesson plan or the curriculum, okay? Well, at the beginning, I mentioned that the innovative thing that I, I was uh, trying to start uh, was uh, in uh, gamification. So. Let me share with you some of the myths of computer games now, because computer games as part of the innovative tools for the digital sessions, um, many people believe that computer games are bad. Others believe that they are good because they develop different skills. So let me share with you some of the myths that computer games uh, can be seen, okay? So first, video games, make people violent, turn people so aggressive. Well, let me tell you that's not true. That's not completely true because if you know the different kind of video games, there are virtual video games where uh, uh, students can uh, develop uh, critical thinking uh, or they compete to win. And the competition is not bad. Competition is good because uh, you develop different skills. You develop to be better, but not because only to win to your opponent. It's because you need to be your better version. And what is the theory behind that practice? That you need to show to your students that the best version of yourself is the one that you have to improve every single day, not because you need to win to the opponent. So you need to win yourself. How? To start doing the best version of yourself every day. Okay, you admire someone who can be better of you, okay? So you need to strive forward and focus on your strength and train, play, but learn from that. Not only for the playing the video games, incorporate as part of your qualities in your real life. So that side is positive. And you need to innovate qualities or things that you train to your students and change their mindset that only playing video, video games is not only for having fun. Yeah, it's having fun, but you can learn more from that, from that part. Another myth is that gamers or the ones that play video games are only men. So that's for everybody. Um, another myth is that all gamers take videos extremely seriously. 
uh, the expression serious means that Israel is regarding to uh, competition that that they only need to win. Someone says, okay, if you play something, if you play in a sport, important thing is to win. If you don't win, you're a loser. So that's another myth, no? Because you can play for fun, just for feel relaxed. It doesn't mean that you're a loser. It means that you learn from that. So that's it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the, the, if you lose a game or you're not good for playing a specific video game, you are a loser. So you need to teach values to your students, no? When you incorporate these video games. Another myth is that people who play uh, video games or apply uh, these kind of activities, uh, they are socially rejected. They are not accepted because they are seen like strange, they are shy or things like that. So that's a myth, no, because many people and adults, adults also play video games and they do it for fun, for relaxing because they are in their free time and they can learn from the, those experience. Um, we can, I can also share with you that when you play games, uh, you must, you are technology deeper, you are, uh, it's a technology. No, because the technology came up in every day, uh, every two years or every two years, the things you learned before in the past, maybe it changes, for example, artificial intelligence these days is demonstrating that things are changing. And there are other tools that demonstrate that what you learned in the past, now at present, maybe you need to update those concepts. So um, another myth is that uh, playing video games is for immature people. This is a sign of immatureness. It doesn't mean that you are immature like, like a child because just you play a video game, no. When you are self-control, when you assume that's only part of an entertainment and just for fun, it is what it is, no? It's not what they show us that they... Or the computer games, no? When people said that that's bad to play video games. No, it's not completely bad. There are some study, studies that prove that playing video games develop skills. And and, I, and, and one of the, the readers that I he agree with those conclusions because I observe and also I uh, followed up some of the people that play video games and they have good results. Okay. The other side of the coin is about the benefits of playing video games. So when you play video games, after you play video games, um, you notice that you can speed up responses at times. So it means that you become fast thinker because you concentrate and focus on one thing, but your brain starts. Uh, so you don't only uh, watch one side, you see different sides. So in, in neuroscience, it means that you are fast finger. So that's a benefit for learners. When uh, you play Kahoot or when you play Wordwall or, or another application that requires that you can play in teams. So you have the, uh, let me tell you that you will probably become a, a good team, team rebuilding gamer. Yeah. And you can also apply it in, in your real life in your social life because you know how to handle difficulties and you develop emotional intelligence that, 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 that is socially important for success in different life aspects, okay? And apart from that, it develops a strategy, okay? The strategy that is very important in intelligence and also, and sometimes it develops leadership. People learn languages when they play video games. 
I notice that people, for example, that they are not when they don't know in, in uh, they don't speak English, but they read and understand the language. So that's another uh, benefit. And obviously, I mentioned the critical thinking before that is a part of the benefits. So those are uh, the ones that I mentioned that I showing you now. Some of the um, authors that I follow and I read about gamification. And those are the others that I base my my own research about this, no? And thanks to those authors, to the support of their articles or their online journals that they have uh, uh, written for books or publishing, I have seen that gamification uh, is not only a tool you can also use for different purposes. For example, for evaluation, for formative evaluation, summative evaluation if you want to include, or simply you want to include in a classroom for a fun or a game. It depends on your perspective or your teaching style. So it's according to, the, to your teacher's philosophy. So now, why do teachers incorporate computers in their classroom? There are many reasons, as I mentioned you. If your philosophy uh, states that uh, it's for fun, for having fun in the classroom, just for incorporating disruptive activity, just because you want your students feel happy. It's a Friday class. Today, it's Monday, students, but today we are going to, uh, we are, it's Friday in the classroom, so we are going to play games. Your students are happy. It's great. So it's good for you. You want to incorporate in that moment. Otherwise, if you think that that, uh, that uh, application or tool is going to benefit your students for um, developing teamwork, developing, uh, I don't know, oh, skills, developing vocabulary, developing grammar, it's also good because you are um giving sense to the to your objective in the classroom so what you need to do is to to use the, the to use this tool in order to um uh, make it possible to make things happen in the classroom so this is the reason why the teachers use the video games or or different notifications tools in the classroom so you can use mentimeter mentimeter is a tool for ice breaking for example in, a, in, a, in an online session. For example, you are going to sing a song in a classroom and before you introduce the singer, you would say, okay, guys, go access to this link in Mentimeter. Tell me, please, what is the name of the singer of this song? And they say, Shakira, Taylor Swift, whatever, no? And, and you see the results in the classroom, the students activate in that way. No teacher is uh, that singer. It's wonderful because you are making your class more interesting and, uh, and active. You know? So you are innovating things um, finally as well. Okay, so, well, there are some things that I would like to share with you, but I want to respect the time obviously for the rest of the speakers. So my last conclusion of the, of this uh, experiment that I have made as a part of innovative things in, in my classroom is that uh, every moment we can incorporate things. So be disruptive in your classroom. So um, I will use the word crazy, you know, do crazy things in your classroom. So every moment, every moment, your students will be, it will be in favor of your, your students development emotionally, socially, academically, linguistically. The perspective you see it, you will see effective results. And also, if you, if you see things that need to be changed, change. Change because you need to incorporate different things. So um, as a part of my, uh, of my innovations, gamification is the one that I have used in my online sessions and also with my students in the real classroom. Thank you so much for your attention and I hope you can uh, um, 
um, use uh, a gamification as well. Thanks to you, Andres, for sharing that knowledge. I really like the good tips for great evaluation that you have just given us. And something very important is to clarify which the myths of computer games are, and you did it so well, and you explained the benefits as well. Thank you very much for this great moment. Good. Let's continue with our learning today. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all of us and all of you who are watching this great event through our social networks as well. Next, we have another great keynote speaker. She is from Brazil. She's a chemical engineer. She holds a master's in chemical engineering and she's a PhD in chemistry. Full professor at the Federal University of Sao Francisco Valley. Currently, she is the coordinator of the Chemical Processes and Innovation Laboratory. Today, this topic is innovation from the university. She's going to give us some cases from university. Please help me welcome with great virtual applause to Viviani Marquez Leite dos Santos from Brazil. The floor is yours, Viviani. Are you hearing me? Sure. Thank you, Ruben, for you, your words <laughs> for me. Thank you. So, uh, uh, hello, everyone. I hope, hope everyone safe and health. I thank all the team members of our project, which is part of GEM, Global Education Network. I will show some innovative technology that resulted from activities at undergraduate, postgraduate, and also involving high school students. The first example, sorry, I will share my, my screen. Wait a minute, please. Do you see my... Perfectly. My screen? Thank you. We can see it. Okay, continuing the first example, first case, uh, before that, the main motivation for this presentation is the importance of developing skills that include the ability to identify problems, propose solutions, and creativity. This is necessary at school, and especially in higher school education, where professionals come from to work in the market, in the society. Today, I will show three student developments. The first is this, a natural lipstick containing pigmentation from hibiscus. Hibiscus is available in our biodiversity, Brazilian biodiversity. This lipstick formulation was developed by undergraduate students, which was protected by patent. But what is a patent? Patent is a document that assigns temporary 
ownership over an innovation or utility model granted by the state to inventors or holders of rights over a creation. This patent uh, has this, this inventor, uh, undergraduate students like Cassia, Lucas, laborator, uh, assistant, Regiane, and a professor, it's me. Uh, about this invention, it's a, a hundred natural formulation. It eliminates the use of chemical additives used in the cosmetic industry, usually, which cause harmful effects on human health and also environmental degradation. This product has good softness and a refreshing sensation. In this way, its natural pigmentation contributes to sustainable development in cosmetology. This uh, picture uh, contains, uh, in that we can see a part of the process. Uh, and this picture, we can see a final product. The second example refers to a, refers a device for local and remote monitoring of cement curing in structure structure sensors. Uh, it's protected by patent to and involve undergraduate students like José Edilson uh, and Igor Rafael. Uh, sorry, undergraduate students like Lucas Damião, postgraduate students like José Edilson and Igor Rafael, and professors like Isnaldo and me. Uh, still like this invention, it's a device for monitoring the physical properties of cement and the fresh and hardened phases using analog and digital sensors installed in the constructed parts. Based on the physical principles of electrical current and read conduction, it allows identifying, among others, the hardening time of the cement and the materials that contain it, and also its mechanical resistance before its application is completed. Is completed. So, accelerating important stage of civil construction process. Do we do the possibility of reducing deadlines indicated in the standards? The device works connected to software called Syntec. The data are sent to a remote station when they can be used for decision market. Ainda Still about that, sorry, the use of the device can contribute to providing greater speed and safety to construction process. Preve prevents the premature removal of shores or props, which could cause the collapse of the structure or removing the prop or shore after the time, which leads to increased construction time. So, higher costs. This is a product brain of this technology. And the third and final example today uh, refers the supply control system. 
uh, it allows the registration of machines and vehicles and the recording of supplies, both from gas stations and from the fuel properly stored in stock. SCA also calculates average consumption and generate reports. The main benefits include more dynamic control of fuel stock and monitoring of average consumption per machine or vehicle over time. Thus, it helps in deciding whether to perform maintenance, maintenance or replace the vehicle or machine, okay? This technology involved a, a lot of students, undergraduate, postgraduate students, and high school students. In this link, we can see the uh, screen of the system. I will show you quickly. This is the screen. Uh, you can write your login and your, your uh, password and access. Here, uh, the system is uh, used like this, the screen. Okay, uh, this technology, technology uh, was uh, registered. These technologies can be transferred for society. Technologies can also generate financial returns in cases of license and assignments. In the case of a social technology, a patent can guarantee that the technology is transfers, transferred to people in need and that they don't have competition from large companies. Finally, uh, uh, we can innovate for continuous improvement in all of activities, such as creating technological devices and new products or process that solve current problems and also in teaching activities like Professor Anders uh, spoke very well. Using different kinds of uh, uh, logical approach, yes, this way we can innovate for and with our students. From scholars, we have the physical and intellectual infrastructure for that. Besides, professor and or students can also receive financial returns from their creations. This is a, a big motivation to education. Thank you. Thank you all. Very, very precious information that you have shared with us today. I particularly enjoyed when you mentioned on-site and remote monitoring. It's very important to be present on-site and remotely. Very good. And something that you finish with is the great paragraph that you 
showed us and the final words that you said, we can innovate for and with our students. Great words. Thank you very much. Let's continue with these great presentations. We are ready now to listen to another great speaker today. He's a digital adoption director and evolution teacher at different universities in Latin America, former CEO at Univers Universidad Autónoma de Capeche in, in Mexico. He's a professor in informatics and master in IT management. His topic for today is innovation isn't always most new. We are talking about Gerardo Elias Navarrete Terán from Mexico. Please, Gerardo, your audience is waiting for you. Go ahead. Gerardo is with us. Okay, I am here, but I can Great, activate Gerardo. my camera if if any if um, who in to help me activating my camera, please. Okay, let's try to talk about uh, some different things that I can use in my journey as a teacher. I love being here in Global Education Network and doing what I want and what I love to do. So I am going to uh, share my presentation, if you allow me, please. Go ahead. Thanks. Go ahead, Gerardo. You should be able to share. Excellent. Great. We see your screen. Okay, that's my camera too. Thanks, Mujidin. So, uh, I want I want to share with you a vision that it's very important to me. I I want to know how do you innovate in your school? And I have named this presentation just innovate because we always think that innovate is use the last one thing that we can find in the world. And I think that we are not in the correct way. So I uh, just want to instruct me and thanks um, Ruben, the wonderful way that he does. But uh, here is my uh, code, my uh, QR code, if you want to know more about me. So um, I really, really appreciate my participation in the network. And let's begin with what innovation is. And you can read in academic circles, uh, this concept that encompasses a broad, broad spectrum of ideas and practices. And it's, it's just brings a new, is not limited to the creation of new products of technologies also includes new methods, processes, and ways of thinking that bring about positive change. And I want to be clear about this. What is new for me? Do you think that new is the last one shout in technology, the last research in education? And yes, that is the most new, but not necessarily is the most innovative to me. I want to reflect with you about this thought because we should think that innovation is just, just the last thing, uh, take the last research results. But I think that this is the key. When we innovate, we get a positive change. 
any kind of innovation, anything that could promote the change. And when I talk about the change, I'm talking about real steps or brain steps that transform your educative practice, your educational job, because we just have to innovate in the place where we are. So when we innovate, we get a positive change in the world, step by step, little steps. And I can do this. So imagine this group of older cellular phones. Some one of them maybe just throw it in trash because they are not more useful for me. Because I want a new phone and I want the last phone, latest phone, and I want the most innovative. I think that. But we can think how many of us has the last phone in the market? I don't. And as this, it's very important that we want to innovate, but remember a case. This crowd of songs was collected to take them in a school of low resources, no money, but these lot of phones were taken there to try to innovate using the cameras, cameras of these old cellular phones. Maybe for me it is not innovative, but for the kids and the teacher in the location that these phones were taken. We're a great day for them. Have in their classes the possibility of use cameras that maybe they never could post. So something that is really new for many of us, but isn't the last for others. And maybe we just have to think in what is needed for make a change. And I'm going through to make some recommendations. Always be the promoter of the change. We as teachers have the responsibility for be change agents. And I think that you as a teacher are doing this in your community and your school. Another interesting recommendation is don't use what you don't know, because sometimes in the aim of using the last technology or the last educational research, we try to implement something that we don't know totally. So we know to learn. We have to learn to implement anything that will be available for our students. And please, you are great teachers. So. Feel confident when you do what you love because what you do is great for your students. You are a model to follow. And please, you need to make them feel that innovation is everywhere, every moment. And he they does need, doesn't need, they don't need, excuse me, any kind of last things. And in Mexico. We use a phrase called de la moda lo que te acomoda. So when you have to make a change, I, I think you can remember this people from uh, Devil's World Prada. And uh, in this case, fashion was the most important things in their lives. But nobody can use any kind of clothes. So that happens with us in education. We have to find exactly 
the clothes that didn't fit with us and use it with our students. So I can say in English, it's fashion, whatever fits you. Not all fashions fit you. So when you try to innovate, you have to use exactly what fits you. And of course, what fit to your students and to your community. What is not innovation? I have repeated many times in this presentation, try to use the last technology. That's not innovation. And why? Because many times you aspire to use success from other without the experience. And the third point, to miss the resource available and destroy your idea. We have the idea that we must um, reach the success of great universities. My university is a small university with no more than five, 15,000 students. I can aspire to do without budget as, and implement a solution that is made in Guadalajara University, where there are thousands of students more than in my institution. So we have to use our own experience and try to reach other universities, but always sitting in our reality and our knowledge of our resources. So as a teacher, we innovate every day Exactly, maybe when I grab a comb from my hair, I am innovating and I have found some of my, my students grabbing their comb just than me. And we are testimony and we can innovate in each moment. And I want to close this presentation just asking you, we innovate every day. Did you? And I think that you are a champion, you are a great teacher, and you innovate in it. Feel confident and enjoy doing because we are changing the world. Thank, thanks, Rita, Thank and Thank thanks, Ruben. Thank you, Gerardo, for this great presentation you have just given us and the recommendations that you suggested to us were incredible. Something that I took note of is always be a promoter of the change. Don't follow the stream. You create the stream. Very good. Great, great. And I really enjoyed because I am a native Spanish speaker as well. The, the phrase that is well known in Mexico and also in Peru. And in English is what you translated very well. It's fashion, whatever fits you. Great. Thank you very much. We Thank continue you, with this great, great moment of learning. Learning moments for all of us. And we thank everyone who is connected through our social networks and learning together. Let's continue with this great moment and our next keynote speaker is a teacher of chemistry, physics, mathematics, and plastic arts in Galicia, Spain, co-founder of Global Education Network. He's responsible for certification of events. He's also vice president of the Association of Chemists of Galicia, where he coordinates the Galician Chemistry Olympics in the International Didactics Congress. He has been a speaker at international conferences and webinars exposing the flipped classroom methodology. 
that he has implemented in the classroom. He has created countless resources for the teaching of his subjects, which he com complies on the website of which he is a creator and administrator, www.juansanmartin.net. So let me introduce you with a great round of virtual applause to Juan San Martin from Spain. Welcome, Juan. The floor is yours. Good morning, good afternoon, a good evening, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for your words. Um, it's a uh, dear, uh, dear friend. Um, thank you very much uh, for giving giving me the opportunity to share the, my experience uh, to Global Education Network, on the uh, Rita, Corina, Mohudin. Um, sorry for my English, it's bad. I go to share my presentation. Okay, uh, I am a secondary uh, education teacher. Uh, my presentation is about flipped classroom in physics, chemistry, and mathematics. And flipped learning, inverted learning, is a pedagogical, pedagogical model that transfers the world of certain learning process outside the classroom and use the class time together with a teacher experience to facilitate and enhance other knowledge acquisition and practice process from the classroom. Change of the teacher role. Why? The teacher's change role. Now he doesn't teach a master class. Now he accompany the student. He is the support and guide. Uh, before, mm, now, in my class. Flip up model, before class. The student assess the living content so indirect means. The teacher sends the students a video, a infography, a presentation, etc. You can make the first assessment of learning through a questionnaire and a enriched video, etc. The students have to know what they are going to receive and what is, is going to serve them. Important. We need to know how you are going to learn it is more important. The content, they must be brief. They leave basic questions of the content. We're talking about the early stage of Bloom's taxonomy. Remember, understand, and ably. Students will also make an initial assessment of learning, although uh, this can be done in the classroom. The teacher received a feedback of the accurate learning. In my case, record the video with a screen of my teacher. My videos is I just use a screenshot. I don't use camera. I think that is a distraction for my for mathematics, uh, physics, and chemistry. Uh, 
edit videos will be more it's, it's easy and professional results. When I have a that a video and upload it, and upload it uh, to YouTube, if the video is very long, I add chapters. My videos are Creative Commons license. Other tools is a puzzle. Uh, a puzzle is a great tool for teachers because we can insert questions and comment into the video. We also recite information about the video, time on other data, other data, Greek uh, feedback. The information that uh, I I see in, in a public is great uh, tool. My presentations uh, I saw I share in slide share. I think that uh, no only how to watch video. It's important that they read. I said the presentation with them on slide side. Uh, important. I, uh, I think that uh, uh, the student have to read and, and write. Uh, for is more important for me. Other tool is Perusel. Perusel is an interesting tool to raise questions which can be resolved uh, by the teacher or between students. Uh, in Perusel to share uh, PDF and the student has to read the PDF and uh, write your comments in this platform. Google Forms. Uh, two minutes uh, no, before I say the Google, the Google Form uh, uh, to the bank. Pero, but uh, in my Google form, I insert a video as an example and ask them to solve similar exercise. The, I have uh, 400 videos in this moment. Before the class, during the class. Uh, students know the contents of learning so they actively participate in the classroom. They rise down of applied uh, the knowledge acquired acquire of, of it. We talk about the state of Bloom's taxonomy, analyze, evaluate, and create. The students can work and collaborate in a group, peer-to-peer -peer learning appears. Sign they are helped you to the different in the way uh, they acquire, acquire the content. It's important for me, uh, the learning uh, in between uh, students. During the class, the teacher can roll. Remember, now he doesn't uh, teach a master class. Now he accompanies the student. He's 
de su pop and guy. Is proposed and guides the work in the classroom or in the elaboration of projects that consolidate learning. You can customize activities and you students and evaluate continuously. Choose during the class, Google for two. Uh, other tool, Socrates, is uh, a easy tool, easy tool. It's a fantastic tool to get feedback uh, when students arrive in the classroom. It's very easy to design the questionnaire. Concept text by Socrates is the platform and important in Socrates. When you finish the test, Socrates sent a PDF of each student. Import, important to uh, to can uh, have a PDF with a uh, note. But uh, in chemistry and in mathematics and physics, uh, the paper is more important. The pencil, uh, no worth it are very important in math, physics, and chemistry. Performing the exercise on paper is essential. It's essential for me. But other tool that I use is live worksheet. I can create interactive worksheet with live worksheet for my students with my PDF. With a PDF, uh, this PDF is very easy. And others, uh, others like short sheet. Uh, in the platform, the other teacher. Two, quit it. Uh, see you, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, no, our teacher Andres uh, I, uh, was speaking about the gamification is a uh, uh, tool for the for it. With this is a fantastic tool for the students to learn by playing and competing. But uh, uh, all the or the tool is Flickr. Flickr is a interesting tool para cooperatively. Flickr allows the students to work cooperatively with a role each. Role each uh, uh, is important that uh, uh, Andrew says where for each group is uh, one session in my class.
importan um, en matemáticas eh, de álgebra eh, es eh, you can see de matemáticas es es uh, fantástica 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 eh, And after class, before class, during class, after class, the students can go to the content sent by the teacher to solve the doubts. The reading uh, of the material that the teacher has provided to the students will serve as support. Infographies. I have created infographies with generally where insert videos, games, interactive worksheets, uh, etc. That I share with my students. Chemical infography, mathematics infography. Other tools with generally. Uh, uh, are escape games. To write the series game with Genialis is very easy. I have several escape games of the different themes. One moment. This is a escape game of uh, mathematics. Uh, uh, Questions and answers. Other questions and answers. I'm sorry, my my resources are in Spanish. My tools, I said in Simbalu. Google Classroom is, uh, is, is my virtual classroom. It's a, a fantastic tool, a fantastic virtual classroom. My web, www.juansamartin.net. Uh, uh, One question that uh, in my country is a problem in the use of telephone in class. I think that the mobile is a grand tool in the classroom but I must teach how to use it. Virtual classroom, because the path cannot be well walking along. Be in this moment, shape the, our experience is more important. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry by my English. No, thank you very much, Juan. Great presentation, great information, wonderful tools for Flip Classroom. Um, they are asking if you could share the links of the games or maybe your symbol so we could check it and, and learn from this wonderful games you shared today. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Thank you all, to all our speakers for these wonderful presentations, Innovating Teachers, our first GEN session of Innovating Teachers. 
And we hope that you continue with this great work and that everybody from around the world, all the teachers from around the world that are listening to us, that are here with us, can uh, be part of these sessions. If you want to share your innovations, please contact us. Please be part of GEN Innovating Teachers. We will love to hear and learn from you. Thank you all. Are there any questions? We have wonderful, wonderful comments in the chat. Yes. Um, uh, wonderful presentations, excellent presentations. Most of them want the, your presentations, slides, um, great information from all of you. And are there any questions? We don't have any questions, only, only the links. Yes. Thank you, Dr. No uh, Leone, for being here, Dr. Noli, for uh, being with us. Thank you all. Greetings from Mexico, greetings from Brazil, greetings from Spain, from Peru, from Ecuador, which are the places that our innovating teachers are right now. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here with us. We hope to see you on our next uh, innovating teacher session. Please contact us. Please um. Re is, is watch the recordings if you have any questions, if you want to watch again these uh, wonderful techniques. Thank you all. Have a great, a great day. Have a great evening. Have a great afternoon to all of you. Thank you for watching us. See you next time. Have a great day. Night or evening or morning, but enjoy your time. Thank, thank you, thank you. you. Um, good, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Sir Juan, Dr. Rita, Sir Ruben, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Noli, thank you. Thank you from GEN, thank you from Udin and Karina. Greets you all and thanks you all for being here.